IQ can get in the way of our emotions is no question. And, and people really without education don't understand what they're dealing with. They hear the word emotion and go, oh, emotions, rather than it's actually an in a primitive intelligence system that undoes everything in organizations. <laughs> You're fairly well established in the IT space. You decide to undertake this massive career change and you've gone into psychology. And how have you found that that's been able to help the people that, you've, that you work with? Look, I think if I felt if I had the privilege to stand in front of people and talk to them or, or co even coach one person, I really had to know my stuff. And I thought, well, what now if I'm going to know my stuff about humans or what makes them tick, I should become a psychologist. That mm. was pretty much the mindset. Um, and I think it's more about a... A duty of care and, and all that in what I do um, and to make sure that the tools I use and the net methods I use are evidence-based so that was the focus um, and and from there it's it's snowballed really I haven't really marketed a whole lot it's it's just my whole business is built by word of mouth and for me I'm very focused on individuals and their development and their change and um, and particularly in leadership I think at the moment leadership training and, and the level of leadership emotional intelligence we have in Australia is really poor. It, let's unpack that a bit. Why, why do you say it's poor in Australia in particular? And it's probably my perspective because I'm probably brought in to help when things are going wrong. Um, but you know, you've only got to look at statistics around people's satisfaction with work and, and employees turnover, all those types of things. Um, and I think you know, we have a lot of leaders who just avoid the self-awareness and, you know, there's, there's this, I think, always a, um, a dual purpose um, in corporate life where we've, you know, self-interest versus the greater good, um, where people are earning money, they're getting good salaries as leaders and they can churn and burn a little bit the staff in order to reach a target or hit a target, mm -hmm. but then they go on to another job and the cycle continues. And, um, yet you've got other leaders who are highly emotionally intelligent and get amazing results and, and long-term results. So, Sean, I, I've always been fascinated about emotional intelligence because, one, I mean, besides the fact that I, I work in that space myself, I, um, the one thing I learned early on is that in, in order to be, sorry, statistically you're more likely to be successful if you're emotionally intelligent rather than having a high IQ. So... Somewhere along the line, we lost our way and we said IQ is more important. But now, do, do you see that there's a bit of a shift towards getting more emotionally intelligent people in positions of leadership today? Well, I think the people who understand emotional intelligence are definitely pushing that. I think IQ can get in the way of our emotions, is no question. And, and people really without education don't understand what they're dealing with. They hear the word emotion and go, oh, emotions, rather than it's actually an in a primitive intelligence system that undoes everything in organizations. Um, so it really is about um, understanding what it is. I think once people, my experience is once people understand what that system is, they stop fearing it and actually can work with it. So what, what's an example of um, somebody that's emotionally intelligent? <laughs> Well, I define emotional intelligence as the ability to be in the right mood at the right time for the right thing. And to me, it's realizing that we all have biases and a set of experiences in life that none of us know everything. None of us can meet every person in the world. None of us can have every experience in the world. So therefore, we've all got a perspective that we bring to the table. And that's what leaders should do. They've got to have the guts to share their perspective. But no one's right. Mm -hmm. So to me, the element of emotional intelligence is curiosity, is being able to be in situations where we're able to take a breath, look at and sum up the circumstances because we have this tripwire, which is the primitive limbic system that can lead people to very rapid judgment. So, you know, I joke about it when, you know, if I go to a party and say people I'm a psychologist, people will just back away slowly because they have a stereotype of what a psychologist is. Um, but they don't really know me. They haven't got to know me. And it's true of all staff. We all make these stereotypes and judgments, but that's an error of thinking, mm. actually. Mm. Um, you know, so curiosity primarily um, is, I think, an, a key element of it. Great. So actually being able to um, not not going off your first base instinct in a situation, but actually sitting back, removing yourself and being curious about a situation. Yeah, it's realizing as a leader, you're going to have biases, whether you like it or not, you do. Um, and sometimes those biases are right and sometimes they're going to deliver profit, no question, you know, yeah. and we can we can burn and sometimes it's required. So I'm not saying we can't be authoritative or we can't be. There's, it's choosing when and it's being strategic about um, 
you know, does this situation demand either directive management style? Does it demand a more curious style? Mm. Um, you know, to me, that's that's the essential element. So, Sean, when you talk about biases, are you talking about um, generally what our personality is like? Like that's that's sort of our well, biases, sum- what our usual personality is? Yeah, it's the sum total of all our experiences. And we could say, you know, there's a lot of debate in psychology about personality and, you know, how much of it is inherited, how much of it is changeable and pretty much the recent evidence is that a lot of it's modifiable once we're born it's modifiable from that point on it for most people they don't change a whole lot because it's very hard to change Mm. but there's been clear studies where we've taken introverts and put them through training and they can come out much higher in extroversion on a personality test so personality does provide a bias and that's sort of why i like the berkman method because it's 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 a tool that actually does show that underlying bias that we all have um it's unarguable it's a research it's mm. not a guesswork it's not a theory tool it's it's based on research so so that ability for a leader to have an awareness over their biases because what i see out there when i'm working with organizations is many many leaders lose their jobs they get um, spurious bullying complaints against them and quite often it's not a genuine case of bullying it's a personality differences because one leader thinks the world is all like this and you know they're not able to deal with other certain personality types can, can you unpack that a bit more like what what do you when you say that it's really just a conflict of personality what what do you mean why and why is it being interpreted as bullying well Pretty much, I mean, I think the cost of organisations of bullying is huge at the moment, and um, and and there's a lot, of, and the cost to investigate those cases and bring you know legal people in to to put together, a, and it goes on for six weeks. And I watch the manager go through absolute hell, and and the staff member on stress leave, and and, and so forth and so on. And it's really a lack of communication. Now, in most cases, I'm not saying there's not genuine bullying out there, and there are, and we know. In any population, there's going to be a number of sociopaths and narcissists that are out there, and no amount of empathy is going to work with them. But that's not all, and uh, bullying cases. So, so what we see is often there's a staff member who's, um, you know, perhaps more sensitive, or they've got more emotionality than maybe the manager, or their perception of that manager um, is the manager's uncaring. When the manager maybe doesn't show a lot of emotions, but they probably are caring. This is what I commonly see. But it's completely a misperception, mm. not necessarily an intent. So it's about the intent behind the situation. So and often that intent is confused. Right, gotcha. So the, the big difference between bullying and personality conflict is intent. Yeah, strategic intent to make someone feel less than to me would be bullying. Yeah. Um, most of the cases I deal with, the, the manager's a bit going, "How? Do, why are they feeling like this? They're not understanding why. One, because the manager's not reading the emotions, or mm. they're not showing their emotions. They're, you know, and it's misinterpreted by the staff member. Now the staff members have a you know, I guess, um, a role to play in being a bit more resilient too. Yep. Um, but the, is the organization offering the resilience training? Is there, are they understanding that to do that? Um, you know, I generally say in my seminars that people are 100% responsible for how they feel. It's mm. their emotions, it's their perception. That makes everyone a bit accountable. It doesn't excuse bad behavior, but if you're in control of your emotions, then you get control of your life. 